Many of us will remember that Warner Brothers, after the film had finished its principal photography and everything like that, even had a cut all ready to go, they pulled the plug on Coyote versus Acme, the hybrid animation live action thing. Now, what's of course funny about us in the fan community, and we all do this, I'm guilty of this, you're guilty of this, everybody. Uh, nobody cares about something, and then once somebody does something to it, everybody all of a sudden acts like they cared. <laughs> nobody was talking about Coyote versus Acme. I mean, nobody was talking about Coyote versus Acme. We we did a story in the show about them developing it a long time ago, and I don't think we've ever gotten one question sent in about it. But as soon as they announced they were pulling the plug on it, everybody acted like it was the most anticipated thing they've been looking forward to in their entire life. Well, fortunately, a couple of good things have happened. One, we heard that there was a screening done for, for people, for certain people in the industry to see, and a lot of people like Lord Miller, and others have come out and said, this movie's great. Good. And then Warner Brothers decided, you know what? Instead of just shelving it, we're going to sh shop it around. We're going to shop it around. So if some other company wants to pick it up, shell out 30 or $40 million to market it and all that kind of stuff, we'll let them do it. So we'll shop it around, see if somebody wants to put it. And, and everybody celebrated. And I thought that was a good move. Everybody celebrated. But there's a problem. Apparently nobody wants it. Uh, this comes to us from the uh, industry insider Puck, and they wrote the following. It's not looking great for Coyote versus Acme. The Looney Tunes movie that was crapped, should have said scrapped, but maybe crapped is the better <laughs> word. That was scrapped by Warner Brothers and is being shot by the filmmakers to potential distributors. Netflix expressed interest, but at less than half of the $70 million production cost. Uh, conversations ended there. I'm told Warner doesn't need to be made entirely whole, like they don't need 70 million, but the film heads, Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi, who are the heads of Warner Brothers, uh, do want to get something semi-decent in exchange for the brand confusion that will be caused by seeing a Looney Tunes movie debut on another platform. Uh, you know, for instance, like an Amazon or whatever. Now, some of you reading that might go, well, wait a minute, John, wait a minute. We just read... Uh, there's a report going around that Am I believe it's Amazon and Paramount, Paramount. Yep. are interested in it. Yeah, but if you read that report more fully, they haven't made an offer. Nobody's made an offer. The only offer that's been made for this movie has around, the, the number I heard was $30 million for a movie that costs $70 million to make. So, I mean, whether or not Amazon actually steps up and actually, it's one thing to say you're interested. It's another thing to actually write a check and say, here's my offer. Whether or not Amazon or Paramount, which is pretty money strapped right now, will actually step up and make an offer? Don't know. And then even if they do make an offer, will it be an offer that's good enough that Warner Brothers won't just get more out of it as a tax write-off? And that's been the problem. Because I think when they announced that they were going to let them shop this around, I think some people, including me to a degree, I have to admit, thought... They'll get a good offer on I mean, no one's going to offer them $150 million for this project, but they'll get a, some good offers. Uh, apparently, all the industry insiders are saying nobody wants it, which is, I guess, on the one hand, understandable because even if it's good, does anybody believe this thing is actually going to make any money? And not a lot of people do. On the other hand, maybe it's not so surprising. I don't know. We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Guys, you know, as a small business owner, I am finding myself having to be in negotiations all the time, whether it's with new contractors, vendors, or even agencies that represent our company. Now, I don't like to go into these negotiations unarmed, so I found the perfect class on Masterclass, The Art of Negotiation by Chris Voss, a real-life former FBI lead hostage negotiator. Taking this class on Masterclass made me feel a lot more equipped and confident going into all these various negotiations I have to do on a regular basis. Masterclass makes a meaningful gift this season for you and anyone on your list because both of you can learn from the best to become your best, from leadership to effective communication to cooking. Every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insight, and much more. There are over 180 classes to pick from. Everything from filmmaking with Martin Scorsese all the way to cooking with the great Gordon Ramsay. In Masterclass, you will find practical lessons that you can apply to your life and work. This holiday season, give one annual membership and get one free at masterclass.com slash campia. Right now, you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash campia. 
masterclass.com slash campia. Offer terms apply. Anyway, Chris, you heard about this. Mm -hmm. Listen, there was some enthusiasm getting generated when we heard yeah. from that screening that, that people like Lord and Miller, who know something about animation, said it's really great. Uh, they greenlit letting it be shopped around. Are you surprised at this point that they're not actually getting any offers on this? Or do, what do you think ultimately is going to happen with this film? There are so many times in my life where I'm bummed that I'm poor. <laughs> and this is one of them. This is one of them. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I'd make an offer. I want to be a big studio and I'd buy it because, uh, you know, this was based on a New Yorker article that is hysterical. It's such a funny premise of Wiley E. Coyote finally going into litigation against Acme, as he should. <laughs> That's right. He's as been he should. so many These times. These products are bullshit. So good for you, buddy. We heard so many positive things coming out the gate about this. But I do think people are in a position, studios are in a position, I should say, where animated projects might be a bit of a gamble, especially if you're going for a theatrical release as opposed to putting it on your streaming network. And if you're going to put it on your streaming network, excuse me, guys, ugh, I have a really bad cold. I'm not contagious and it's not COVID. Um, I, you're not going to make any money streaming this, right? Unless it's kind of a pay-per-view thing or you think you're going to get subscribers from it. You really won't. Not enough to kind of move the needle. So a theatrical release is the only way you're going to really make money off of something like this. And that's what I think will hold people back from something, even if it is really strong quality. Because contrary to popular belief, this did originally have a theatrical date set. It was lined up with Barbie. <laughs> Good call, guys. Um, and so I think I think Barbie that's going to be... <laughs> I would have seen that triple feature. It would have been great. Barbie um, <laughs> What? Explosions here. Explosions in opera. Oppenheim. <laughs> Go straight to Barbie. But uh, I just, I think it's a tough market right now for for little fun films like this because it's just not particularly cost effective. And, and this is going to raise the question. Mm -hmm. If at the end of the day, nobody is willing to offer Warner Brothers a, a reasonable amount and Warner Brothers ends up recouping more money by ledging this movie as a write-off, does that mean Warner Brothers was right? But at the end of the day, they are they going to be proved right in doing this if nobody's willing to step up and, and put their money where their mouth is and say, "Here's a check for this thing." I, you know what? Here's I'm going to go. I'm going to be optimistic. I think somebody will come along and make an offer for this. I think if Amazon and Paramount do get involved and say even put in lowball offers. I think there could be value in this for Netflix and maybe Netflix comes back and improves their offer a bit. I mean, it's not going to be 70. No. But I think even if they can get an offer up to like 45 million, I think at that point, Warner Brothers looks at and goes, you know what? If you want to buy an office for 45 million, we're still losing money, but that's better than the tax write-off we'll get if we just shelve it. And I, so I think at the end of the day, somebody will come in at 45. I really hope so, because I really don't like this being the new norm of just shelving completed projects. I really don't like it. Um, and Warner Brothers has done this quite a bit. And, and it's a bummer to see. It's always disappointing when anyone makes art of any kind that doesn't get to be seen, you know? And, and I think that's always so unfortunate. So I yeah, really hope but, somebody buys I mean, it. We also have to keep in mind, I mean, it, it, it sucks, but we also have to keep in mind that it's easy for us to feel that way when it's not our money. Oh, sure. Right? Like if I'm somebody great else is, at spending other people's yeah, money. Yeah, because if, if it's, <laughs> and we're all great at spending so other people's money, it. but it's like, if if you're a student in business, you realize, okay, we put a lot of money and effort and energy and whatever into this, but the reality is it now looks like we're going to recoup more of our money for this if we just ax it than if we put it in theaters. We're going to lose even more money. I mean, it just becomes, I mean, maybe that means they got to be more careful about what they green light. So mm -hmm. was this a case where the older, the the people who were making decisions at Warner Brothers before Zaslav uh, took over, was this one of those movies that this was This was a decided... project that was greenlit under AT&T yeah, oh, okay. before, before okay. Warner Brothers Discovery owned them. This is a movie that got underway then. So it's going to be interesting, but I'm going to be optimistic. I think at the end of the day, I do think somebody's going to pick this up for a low ball number, but just enough that it makes more financial sense for Warner Brothers to go for it than not. So anyway, fingers crossed, here's hoping because I keep hearing that this movie is really quite good. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.